What's up everybody? Jonathan Rose, Active Day Trader, and I'm gonna make a video on how to trade futures. Now, for those who have been following my work, you know that I'm getting very, very concerned with the overall market. And I'm getting overall concerned with the overall market because of what's happening in the emerging markets. So I'm gonna to link to a video about my view on the S&Ps relative to emerging markets. Watch that video and you'll see in the US, I have a big, big bearish bias because of what's going on in Argentina, what's going on in Turkey, what's going on in South Africa, and overall emerging markets are getting smoked, getting hit very hard relative to their US counterparts. So now let's talk about how to trade futures. Now, overall, many people look at futures, they look at the S&P futures, and they try to determine what all these little patterns say. And many people will say, you know, hey, this is gonna be a head and shoulders, or it's gonna be a breakout, a consolidation, whatnot. I don't want you to do that. I think that there's an easier way to trade futures. I think that there's a more sensible approach. Instead of just looking at the S&Ps in isolation, let's say, for example, that you agree with my thesis, that you agree that the S&Ps relative to emerging markets are very, very expensive. So instead of looking to buy and sell, trade the market from two sides, maybe we're only looking to sell on opportunity. Now we have to ask the question, okay, cool, we have an opinion, we're only gonna sell, how do we find a trade? That's when I want you to start thinking about things from a relative value standpoint. Here's what I mean. Don't just look at the S&P. Let's look at the S&P relative to something else. So in Thinkorswim, I just hit this beaker, I scroll down, and I'm gonna do a little comparison. Let's do a comparison, and we can do a comparison to any highly correlated instrument. Let's use the Dow. Dow S&P, popular spread, many people trade it. Okay, apply, okay. Here's what it looks like. Let me put it on a daily, let's get some more data. And you'll see by putting it on a daily, I also put it on relative change by percentage. These things are really, really, really highly correlated. Okay, it looks like the Dow trades expensive to the S&P. Then it catches up. They're trading pretty much the same. And right now, relatively, the Dow is a little bit more expensive to the S&P. So instead of selling the S&P, maybe you want to look to the Dow but you can go even further. Let's add some other instruments. Not only do we have the Dow, what about if we add the NASDAQ? And we look at the NASDAQ relative to the S&P and also relative to the Dow. Throw on the Russell as well, RTY. Okay, apply, okay. And now we have a lot of lines on the chart, but if we look at the pink, which is gonna be the Dow, the yellow is gonna be the S&P. Let me take off the Dow just so it presents a little bit more clearly. And here's what it looks like going back to October 2017. And we can start to see relative to the S&Ps, the Russell and even the NASDAQ is expensive relative to the other instruments. What also I see from this chart is look at the relationship between the Russell and the NASDAQ very, very closely correlated, right? So let's take away the S&Ps and let's just look at NASDAQ and Russell. NASDAQ and Russell here, they broke apart. Definitely a good trade opportunity. You see they come right back together. Haven't really broken apart here. They break apart, come back together. But right here, you'll notice the NASDAQ is expensive relative to the Russell. We already know that the NASDAQ and Russell are both relatively expensive to the Dow and the S&Ps. If anything, the s and is the cheapest of the four indices, of the four major indices. So what I like to do and how I teach how to trade futures, how I trade futures, the easiest and most conservative way, while still keeping in yourself in position to make a whole bunch of money if you're right, if you want to get short something, don't sell the S&Ps. Don't sell the Dow. I wouldn't sell the Russell either. If looking to get short, 
consider getting short the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ is the most expensive relative to the others. Again, if you share the view that I have that the S&P's US is very expensive relative to emerging markets. If you don't, if you share an opposing view and you want to get long one of the indices, well, let's do the same exercise but you don't want to get long the NASDAQ because we've already determined that the NASDAQ is expensive relative to the others, you might want to consider getting long the S&Ps. And that's having a plan, trading your plan. And the advantage is it doesn't allow you to trade the S&Ps to buy and sell, to buy and sell. Because if you're doing that, you're really not letting the darn thing move. You're finding what's relatively expensive and what's relatively inexpensive. Try that out, guys. I think you'll find you have a lot of a lot of success with that approach. Thanks, Jonathan, Active Day Trader.